Today, I installed something that is kind of blasphemy in the Linux community, but it's basically Windows on Linux for the most part. It's not true Windows, but at the same time, I love the project. I love the theming of it. I thought it was done so well. It could fool a lot of people, and a lot of people are using it as a way of just kind of prank folks. But at the same time, I think this operating system could be used to help people transition or even learn Linux. So let's get right over on the desktop and look at this thing because it's pretty amazing. I just got to show you. We'll hit start Linux Windows FX. It's also considered Linux FX. The naming scheme's just a little funky here. So here is the first portion of it. As you see, <laughs> it's kind of got this weird Cortana knockoff. Uh, that's what the little dots are. But uh, let's go ahead, move that over. I don't really care for that. So we're just going to apply, get our resolution to where it should be. And we'll go ahead and close that out from here. Let's go ahead and start the install of Windows FX. We'll flip right through. You'll see it's kind of like a themed Ubuntu installer that's made to look Windows-esque. Now, when I say it's a themed like Ubuntu, it is Ubuntu underneath this. Uh, this version was just released like one or two weeks ago, I think uh, the beginning of September. And it's using Ubuntu 20, from my knowledge. Um, it will be using Cinnamon Desktop as a base. And the rest of this, we'll just go ahead, kind of zip right through. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this whole part. Uh, it is from Brazil, so you'll notice some translation did not come over. You will see some stuff in a different language. So uh, I did notice that just kind of poke it around on this operating system. Now, there is a couple things we're going to try instead of just looking around uh, the distro. This one will, will install some Windows programs. So it has Wine built into it, so you can launch executable files and other things. So we're going to download some proprietary things. I already know a couple that won't work, uh, but we're going to try uh, just a whole variety of them. So we're going to try three installers just so you can see what it would look like for a Windows user that knows nothing about Linux. Okay, our install is complete here. Um, let's go ahead and restart the computer and see what we get on startup. I love this shutdown theme. That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. All right, here comes the first startup. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fix my resolution and install some other optimization tools here. And here is the desktop. Uh, this is very, very much like Windows. I think many noob Windows users coming to Linux could use this and probably wouldn't even notice the difference between Windows and this uh, spin of Linux because all the icons are copied exactly. So uh, when you're in here, honestly, I like this file browser better than File Explorer. So for many, they'd come in here and go, oh, okay, well, there's the file system and they could just go instead of having quick access and all the other shenanigans that you have in Windows. So this is set up and copied one-to-one -one pretty darn good, and I would even say this is an improvement. And then you got the start menu, which this right here, again, is better than probably the Windows counterpart as everything's kind of broken up. And I love what they've done here with Office. You can see that they switched to only Office. So in Office, if we click on like Excel, you'll notice it takes you in here. And to a newbie user, this would be almost identical to what Excel looks like, except there's all free and open, which is amazing. So having only Office in here, I love it a lot better than LibreOffice. Uh, probably one of my recommended ones for anybody using it is it's free, open, and you can easily get it going. So only Office by default is pretty awesome. I think they used to use LibreOffice, but don't. Evolution is really not a replacement for Outlook though. So anybody using this will immediately go, ooh, all right, well, Evolution, uh, it's not bad, but at the same time, it's a little bit dated looking where Outlook looks a little bit sleeker. So uh, that's probably noticeable. Cool, other cool things is like all the integration with like web browsers. You have Chrome and Firefox here, which that's going to cover 99% of the users out there. 
I would have liked to see like Chromium instead of Chrome, but I get it. A lot of people associate Chrome and, and want to log into their Google accounts coming from Windows. I know when I first came to Linux, I was in that camp. So it makes sense that these are what they chose. It already has Team Viewer installed by default. So if you're migrating a Windows user to Linux, you could easily assist them using Team Viewer. Um, and then there's a couple other things like having Zoom and other things installed here. I could see this transition. Again, I, I'm looking at this more from a transition phase from a Windows user to Linux, and I like it for that. Uh, obviously, as a Linux user, you probably would never want to use this, except maybe to prank your friends. But it's really neat, this entire layout. And here is something that's really kind of funny. They copied the entire Metro UI here, and they did a pretty decent job. Uh, as you see, you have all of the same icon, the same look, the same layout. Um, I'm impressed by this, uh, to be honest with you. That is crazy to me how, how clean they got it for being a, a direct copy. So there's that. Uh, obviously, I hate the Metro UI. Even in Windows, I'm always just doing start, run, and then typing control to get to the old school control panel. So I would go back to the more basic control panel here. Uh, this this just fits my needs and you can get around a lot better. I think copying a bad design decision by Windows to here, I, I really, I think they invest a lot of work to make something that's worse than just the basic uh, control panel. I think every user would appreciate this a lot more than the janky Metro UI that Windows had. Again, not all design decisions Microsoft makes are smart. Uh, and the fact they put all that time and effort to copy a terrible design decision uh, kind of seems wasted. While we're on that subject of bad de design decisions, they decided to make like a copy of Cortana with Hello uh, Assistant. And, and it's just, again, the transition, the language transition here is not great and has just like some really basic functions that you could probably find in the basic control panel anyways. This just seems like a complete waste. I, I don't know what the, exactly they were thinking on this one, too. Um, I would completely ditch this whole deal and <laughs> connecting to the Google, Google API and stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm out. I'm out on that. Okay, so let's go into actually using their native executable. I downloaded three programs, Media Monkey, Winamp, and then also Notepad++. These programs are something I could see a Windows user just going and going, okay, I'm going to just go download these. So let's go ahead and click on the executable. Let's see what happens here. Um, they're probably going to, okay, it's installing Wine or something. A normal user would just sit here, wait for it to do its thing, and we'll go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to pretend like I know nothing about computers and just install these executables as I would on a Windows box. And we're going to go ahead and hit Finish little artifacting around where a, a shadow should be, but that's just wine being wine. You'll notice it's still a little janky, like you have this white spot right here. You could probably get around using this, but I imagine it'll crash when it gets into actually using and, and traversing the computer. It's real laggy. These are just kind of downsides to trying to use Windows programs in Linux. A lot of Windows programs can, but there's also a lot that can't. Media Monkey here kind of works, but not really for a day-to-day. -day. You'd want to use a native uh, Linux app, such as like Lollipop would be like a good recommendation instead of using Media Monkey here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back and say, okay, let's try Winamp now and see what it does. See how it loads the app. So we'll go ahead and just hit next, next, finish and this one crashed. We'll go ahead and try it one more time, and we'll go ahead and hit next, and crash. So Winamp, no go. Media Monkey installed, but not really usable. And then finally, Notepad++, which is just a basic text editor a lot of Windows users use. I should notice, uh, note that the more complex a Windows program is, the least likely it is to work. Great, so probably one out of three, you had Media Monkey that installed, not really usable, Winamp that just crashed during the installer, and then you had Notepad++ that just worked just fine. Stuff that won't work, Microsoft Office will not work, Adobe Suite will not work. 
that's a quick breakdown from a Windows user coming to Linux. But it's it's really interesting to see how much this is involved. It used to be much more difficult to get a lot of Windows programs work in Linux. But for now, I, I would say that this is pretty solid for the occasional real simple Windows program. But as soon as it has any level of complexity, it's going to be kind of a dice roll whether or not it'll work. This video is brought to you by Linode. Are you tired of those builder websites that nickel and dime you for every little upcharge? Well, with Linode, you can easily take your website wherever you want. It's very portable, but they also have a whole host of open source tools that you can use. So if you want to get like an SSL cert, you can easily use like CertBot and do it yourself and not have to pay an outrageous fee. On top of that, if you click the link in the description below, you get $100 credit and 60 days worth of free time to do whatever you want. So make the smart decision today, click the link and try Linode. So who's this distribution made for? And it's really meant for those in Windows coming to Linux for a first time. I like a lot of the intuitiveness and how much it is almost identical to Windows. If it ever got any massive popularity, uh, Microsoft could easily shut this down because I know they've reused their assets here. Uh, it's very obvious that almost everything they have is a one-to-one -one copy of Windows. And that's fine for learning purposes. Uh, however, uh, there are some you know low spots this distribution. The Hello uh, Cortana ripoff, the copy of the Metro UI, these types of things are just terrible. I really wish their team or, or the one guy behind this wouldn't bother with that. Also, I think it would have been better off getting some decent translations. And maybe if you love this distribution spin, you can donate back to the project and say, hey, this is uh, translated wrong and help them out as uh, I think it could be something great. But for now, I'm just going to say it's great for a newbie coming from Windows. It teaches them some of that open source counterparts like only Office instead of Microsoft Office, Evolution instead of Outlook, those types of things. And it would kind of help that transition. But don't think of it as, hey, I'm going to use my Windows programs on here. As we saw, these real basic programs, we got like one out of three to work right out of the gate, which is about to be expected. So as a veteran Linux user, this thing is terrible. I'm just going to tell you right now, I absolutely hate it. If I wanted to use something like this, I would use Windows. Um, but again, uh, for that new user, I think it's perfect for them coming to Linux because they're able to get around, launch their web browser, do the real basic stuff they need to do without having to worry about viruses and a lot of other negatives that Windows has. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And as always, thank you to all the people that support me over on ChrisTitus.com and also using the YouTube membership below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.